Hey guys, Friday the 15th, March Friday the 15th. I hope wherever you are, you uh, had a safe uh, last uh, 24 to 48 hours. Uh, if you're out there in, in the West in Denver, Colorado, I got a feeling you're uh, uh, knee deep to uh, a tall Indian in, uh, in snow. And if you were up north uh, around Chicago and in Indiana, the tornadoes. So I hope that uh, the only thing you got was a bit of a thrill and no damage. Thought I'd show you what we're up to. The hill climber's coming right along. I've uh, finished up the roof as far as the cosmetic bodywork goes. I've already spray painted it with a, uh, uh, well, two primers. The red primer you see there is a, uh, is a, uh, a scratch and a tiny dent filler. Uh, I finished that up a few uh, days ago, just letting it get good and hard. Uh, I've done uh, what body work that I need to do here on the side. Those are just basically dings. Actually, that's where the um, uh, that's where they're clipped together. But uh, they that was more than just being uh, the tabs being bent down. Somebody had uh, uh, put a little bit of force to it and, and uh, stoved in just at the very bottom uh, the side. So I've got that all taken care of. We worked on the front a little bit. This front was really bumpy. I have no idea what was done to that. You can see the high spot right there. It was like somebody had used a, a punch on the back side and peened it. Uh, uh, that's what happens when you leave stuff on the floor. On the other side, it was actually fine, but it was uh, it had been um, clipped together so much that it, it pulled in that, uh, that center panel. So I put a light glaze on that and, and uh, Filled that in, got it nice and level. Uh, I've got another spot on the other side that's curing. As soon as that's done, I'll be able to uh, sand it down. Actually, I don't sand this stuff. I, I don't know what this uh, uh, what this glaze is, but it ain't the regular glaze. It is so hard that if you have an ex excess, you ain't going to sand it. Or you, well, you can if you want to spend five or six days to do it. I use a file on this stuff, a flat file. I take it down exactly where I want. It shows where any low spots are. Uh, and then I glaze it again. And then I uh, bring it down with the file until it's flat all across. And then I feather it out with sandpaper. It's the damnedest stuff I've ever used, but I like it. I like it better than the, uh, uh, the, the red glaze that I had used in the past. And this is more impervious to, uh, uh, paint thinner. Uh, cause sometimes if I screw up, I throw the whole thing in and, uh, uh, in paint thinner and take the old, uh, the, the new paint that I screwed up off and it doesn't seem to bother this, this filler. So I, I like that. That cuts down on work. I've decided I'm going to, the color scheme I'm going to do it is the roof is going to be black, uh, like on the inner urban. And that is a semi gloss black. And then on my American flyer double power truck, I don't know if you'll see the difference between them or not, but it's a light green in the center and it's a darker green at the bottom. Uh, I'm sorry. It's a darker, yeah, darker green top and bottom, lighter green in the center. And I'm going to go with the lighter green for the, the body of the car and then do any rubber stamping that I'm going to do and, and, uh, put the power trucks on it and pretty much call it done. So I'm hoping in the next 90 years, I'll, I'll have this uh, completely finished. My problem is I'm working outside a lot right now, so this uh, this only gets worked on when I really feel the need. The other thing I think you'll enjoy is this. We got a cavalade of 384s, and I'll show you what I mean. Something that I just picked up off of uh, off of eBay. There's your there's your as issued 384. Here's a issued 384 that I picked up a couple years ago off of eBay but this is this is my newest and latest addition this is an 060 384 switcher and it is this thing is an absolute bear the motor, I, I bought it for one, well, a number of reasons, because I wanted it. And that, that's all that, all I got was just the, uh, was just the motor. I bought a slope back tender about, uh, six or eight months ago. And I bought that blue slope back to go with, uh, this particular 384, but it was way too big. So I used a Lionel. But on this 384, it's absolutely perfect. Now, the only thing I might do is 
put 200 series struts on it, which will jack that uh, the height of the uh, tender up a little bit higher. Uh, in fact, I tried this one. This is a 390X with the uh, 200 series, and it actually overshadowed this locomotive just a little bit because the tender top was higher than the cab. That won't be the case with uh, the slope back. Something else that I liked uh, that this guy did, uh, he put uh, boiler bands on it, which is really cool. But back to that motor. I wanted to see how this motor was built. I rolled it over. I looked at it. It's all machined out. Uh, this old boy could never emulate that type of work. I have no idea who did it, how he did it, or or why he did it, but it's absolutely, the workmanship is fantastic, something that's way beyond my capabilities. The only thing I might do is, I might change it, not change it, but I may add steps to the front, um, uh, uh, foot plates. Uh, you've seen those on uh, uh, on switchers before. Uh, no cow catcher, just two foot plates, and of course the uh, uh, the coupler uh, through the center. This one happens to be broken off, but it's it's uh, screwed on. And it looks like I haven't looked real closely, but I think it's an easy change. And I think, I mean, even if I don't put foot plates on it, it will still have the proper switcher look. So let's give it a quick run and uh, see what you think. All right. Hopefully I won't trip on anything trying to get to the uh, get to the transformer. The valve gear uh, really works cool on this too. Whoever did the machine work on it, it it's. It's very smooth, very quiet. What we're going to do is I'm not of course going to uh, leave that tender blue <laughs> ain't no way uh, I will take that off and uh, we'll play, I'll paint it a semi uh, gloss black uh, no reason to paint it gloss I mean uh, I don't uh, this is almost painted flat I'm not sure or it just could be because it's old uh, but uh, gloss paint would be way too shiny. And then I'll rubber stamp it. And I've got a rubber stamp that says uh, Pennsylvania right there along the side, I think, which will work quite fine. If not, I'll just make uh, make me another one. But uh, that's what I've got in in uh, in mind for this thing. Uh, if you guys are actually interested in knowing what this thing cost, I thought I got it at a steal. Uh, I gave $250 for it. Of course, that's before... They stuck Illinois tax to it and, and shipping and, and all the other. But uh, the initial cost, I, I, I couldn't make it for $250. I can tell you that right now. Well, first of all, I ain't got the skill. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm really well pleased with it. And I'm really well pleased as to how smooth this is. Now, this is strictly a 72-inch radius uh, locomotive because there's flanges on all three wheels. It ain't going to run on the 42. It might run on the 57. I've never tried it yet, and I don't know that I will. But um, uh, my my idea of what template is, it's got to run on 42 or in anything above. Well, this ain't going to run on 42, but it'll be close enough for my government work. All right, guys. You all have a safe and happy and hopefully warm warmer weekend and we will all talk to you later toodaloo